Good evening and welcome to the April 10th, 2018 meeting of the Board of Selectmen. Uh, as always, we'll start out with public input. Is there anyone here with input from the public on a matter that's not covered by the agenda? Madam Clerk. <laughs> Voter registration deadline next Tuesday. Um, dog licensing are due next Tuesday. So the registration is for the annual town meeting in the election. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, you'll forgive me if I'm, I'm going to move quickly here because we have a very special guest and I want to get there her as soon as possible, but uh, in terms of Chair's comments, I want to uh, point out um, the absence of our town administrator. Town administrator is doing the town's business in the western part of the state. Uh, rather than have him come back here and then go back out for tomorrow, uh, <coughs> I uh, thought uh, he could use the time better to rest and prepare because he is a player coach in that matter. Uh, but it's like losing a good left arm. Uh, w the town is trying to work out uh, a service or a situation where the highway department will chip some old, uh, some of the old debris that came down in the storms. That isn't firm yet, but we'll make an announcement when it is necessary. And finally, and this, uh, unless there's correspondence matters, this will lead into um, our guest, uh, we had the Autism Awareness Blue Lighting a week ago last Monday. It was a wonderful event. Uh, the State Representative Hogan was there and uh, presented a certificate on behalf of the legislature. Uh, I think uh, people got a, a great kick out of it. And uh, uh, it was for, a, you'll forgive the trite expression, a very worthy cause. Uh, is there any correspondence? Items or items from correspondence. <coughs> then uh, I would like to go uh, straight to our uh, special guest, Representative Hogan. <coughs> and I'm sorry that Selectman I still see you. Selectman Hawks. Yes, man. Selectman. Come in. And Chairman. Last and <laughs> least. Uh, but um, I do feel badly that uh, Representative Sal, I mean, uh, not Representative Salvi, but Selectman Salvi and our town administrator couldn't be there. Uh, as I told you before the meeting, they're two of your biggest fans. Thank you so much. I have newsletters. These are not necessarily the most recent update, but they do have a lot of information for things that are going on at the State House and have been going on at the State House during this session. So I wanted to share those with everybody and can certainly leave two uh, extra for other folks to uh, review and mm -hmm. take a look at. So there we go. We can go that way. Thank you. So. I am so glad to be here. Um, we are approaching our budget, our state budget, and uh, our budget week, which will be uh, the third week in April, where the House prepares its budget, and then it moves to the Senate and then back to our governor. Um, the budget this year uh, is $40.9 billion, whereas the consensus in January by folks that make consensus around revenue. and. <clears throat> what we're looking at this year are uh, Chapter 90 was just passed, uh, 200 million was just passed for local road repair bill uh, for repairs to both uh, roads and bridges. Um, I know and am waiting to hear that this is not going to be enough because of the nature of this last winter. So all of us are uh, waiting to see what happens and what our municipalities are going to be needing moving forward um, in, the, in the coming uh, spring and into, the, into the, the summer and seeing just what things are going to be looking like. So 200 million was passed, it goes on to the Senate and hopefully will be signed uh, quickly so that we can get to, our, get to our road repairs when it stops being winter. Um, local aid, <coughs> The governor has proposed an increase of 3.5% over last year's levels, FY18 levels. And Stowe receives in that about 435000 and some change. Um, I don't think there will be less in local aid than the governor has proposed, but it probably won't be extremely high. Or the percentage won't come in much higher than the 3.5, though it's certainly I'll be delighted to see it as we look at revenues that are really coming in, um, which are much higher than had been anticipated at this time of year. But as everybody knows, 
with this economy, we never ever take for granted a good month. And we always need some a side for a bad month or a string of bad months that can't necessarily be explained uh, by pointing to one source of revenue. So we tend to uh, err on the side of caution whenever we're dealing with um, increases. In education, um, the governor has proposed an increase uh, by about 2.5 percent over FY18 levels. That's a statewide investment of about $4.8 billion. Um, I would not be surprised if we saw that increased a bit by, by the House as we move through our, our negotiations. Um, that means the Neshoba Regional would receive about $6.9 million in Chapter 70 funding. I'll be filing an amendment to the House budget that aims to e examine the inequities between transportation funding, um, regional, non-regional schools, but even more so uh, uh, reviewing how we fund transportation for our schools and provide transparency in how we actually uh, create um, those opportunities because I think there may be ways that we can look at and come to understand better how how we pay and how we uh, create um, our whole how, how the system is created and how it works and how it might do better um, last week the, we passed the House of Representatives passed an FY 18 supplemental budget which included language bringing the reimbursement rate for special education circuit breaker to 72 percent and I will be co-sponsoring an amendment uh, during the FY19 budget debates in order to bring the circuit breaker uh, up to the recommended level of uh, 75 percent. So we will see where we are with that in the FY19 budget, but we are at 72 percent now with the uh, addition, the additional monies that were released um, in the FY18 uh, supplemental budget that was passed last week as well. <coughs> Aid for local councils on aging. Um, we are on track to reach our goal of $12 per senior by 2020, and the governor has actually come out and wanted to get this done the year, the year early. So that, that's good for me. <laughs> and it's good for our seniors, and it's good for our town. So I hope that happens. Um, we've also, <coughs> excuse me, I keep getting colds. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. I never got colds much, and I was thinking of getting um, to further help seniors, uh, we provide some wraparound services for more than 120,000 individuals in Massachusetts with Alzheimer's and dementia. And in February, the House passed uh, legislation to establish the Alzheimer's Disease Advisory Council. And that's going to provide um, the legislature with recommendations on policy and analysis on state-funded research and also on care. The bill grants physicians the flexibility to share diagnosis and treatment information with the patient's family. It creates a minimum uh, training for um, social workers, medical professionals. It's a very good bill. It's a great beginning. And, and one of those uh, bills that passed that, that makes you realize that, again, Massachusetts will lead in uh, dealing with the issue of Alzheimer's and dementia in our communities. I'm also pleased to announce that the 495 Metro West Suburban Edge Community Commission, here to refer to as SEC, um, has approved its report on findings for the uh, region. Um, as you know, it was established by the legislature in 2015 to examine development challenges uh, faced by the 33 suburban communities up and down the 495 <coughs> and Metro West. Um, it's prepared in two sections, a narrative, uh, a synopsis of the challenges, and a detailed regional profile in each of those 33 towns will have a very detailed uh, regional profile. It, some of the information has been absolutely fascinating. Um, most of it has never um, been made public before or gathered before, uh, analyzed before. It has a lot to do with where we go to work, our level of education, the needs around housing. Um, it's, it's fascinating. It makes really good reading, I promise, and, and we'll be sharing that um, when it's very recently been, been um, okayed, so we don't have a hard copy in hand, but we'll share them when we get them. Um, another piece that I wanted to share, because it's uh, one of my top priorities, agricultural state tax reform and the uh, tax valuation for farms, where we take it out of uh, development and tax at the agricultural rate for land. Um, this came out of uh, one of our Farm Bureau breakfasts, where farmers were talking about um, one generation inheriting a farm from another and 
having to sell off land in order to pay their taxes. So this will, with many, you know, um, many ways to protect against misuse of this, but certainly with a sharp laser focus on keeping the, the family farm intact. And it came out um, with the um, environmental bond bill. It was put in there by the governor. So we're hoping that that will become law this year. Very, very excited about that. And then also, it has been a wonderful year or two years for our um, municipal and state partnerships with grants and uh, looking forward to, to more grants and, and more great partnership and more work. Um, but from the MassWorks grant, um, SAFE grants, airport safety and maintenance program, conservation partnership, cultural investment, mass downtown initiatives have just been mm -hmm. rocking it, if we can use the vernacular here. Um, and I think that um, it's been very helpful to our town. And uh, I can't, excuse me again, I can't say enough about the folks that work um, in town hall. I think they do a great job. It's wonderful to work with them. It's easy to work with them. And it's easy once, once there is nothing that succeeds like success, to use another use, euphemism, uh, Mr. Chairman. And once we were able to, to begin to develop these uh, grants, and begin to show that we're ready, shovel ready always, and, and ready to get it done on time and on budget. It, it's just always makes it easier to get another grant or another investment from, from the state. So that, ha that is more or less, oh, I wanted to share this with you. Because I've been bringing Airbnb, we, the House has passed uh, the Airbnb bill, and the Senate has theirs. So there'll be conference committee and will come out with a bill by the end of the year. But I always like to share this, and I was looking. I do not believe that Stowe has an Airbnb. It is not on a register. So to my knowledge, we have not entered the Airbnb age in, in the town of Stowe. But I do have, and we'll leave with you, a, um, the act and the, the state excise, the local tax, and things like that uh, to give you an idea of what, if and when, we get our first Airbnb, how the poor soul can be regulated properly. <laughs> Do you think we should be working harder on that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know, it, that's not for me to say, Mr. Chairman. Do you have an extra room, Brian? <laughs> <laughs> so what's your portion for? Oh, no. uh, so those are, those are the things I'm also... My rental um, is day-to-day, -day, Mr. Brian. With great respect, um, we have spent a lot of, uh, I say we, um, I've spent a lot of time working with transportation in all my towns. And um, Crosstown Connect has done a lot of really great things from the traditional commuting to the suburb, to suburb, uh, to the last mile, to daily needs trips. And I'm wondering if it would be possible at some point when things aren't too hectic to take a look at it again. I know that Crosstown came when they had first started. And I think we said, mm, we're good. And I think at that time there wasn't a lot that we thought that Crosstown could do for the town of Stowe. <coughs> and I'm not convinced that's still the case. Um, so I would just ask that maybe someone take a meeting, whether it be the town manager or the select board, have a conversation with those folks and see if there isn't some way that it might be useful to the town of Stowe. Do you think perhaps your staff <coughs> could give us an email? Oh, absolutely. And then uh, that way we can follow up. I'd hate to fall into the uh, cracks, <coughs> especially since our town administrator isn't here. No, absolutely. We'll definitely do that. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. On that, uh, I've been town's uh, liaison to, or appointee to, to Magic mm -hmm. for, I guess, the whole of my two terms. And uh, <coughs> when that first came up, it was, it was heavily being driven and chauffeured and, and, uh, by uh, the MAGIC organization representing the 13 communities in the sub-region of, of MAPC. And as I recall, it wasn't so much that the town didn't see an interest or perhaps a need as much as there was a conflict, at least at that time, between uh, requirements to become part of Crosstown Connect, you had to have dedicated vehicles which could be used for that purpose. And in the other towns, uh, they had 
uh, arranged successfully to use their Council on Aging vehicles. And at the time, uh, there was stated that there were uh, restrictions in the donations for which those vehicles had been purchased, placed on them that they be used only for Stowe residents, not that they didn't go out of town, obviously, on various trips. Uh, so that may be, whether it's just a policy of the uh, Council on Aging. Do you recall, Don, was it about, I want to say almost five years yes. ago, maybe, that we yes. had a conversation? Yes. So. Because it so was take another look, see it's when I was new on the board, and I'm coming up to six years now. Yeah. So, uh, um, Jesse <coughs> uh, Stedman, jack of all trades, uh, is probably as good a source of information uh, on that. So we can uh, uh, Thank you. I can talk to him it. and and see what, if anything, he thinks has changed, or you know how how we might take another look I at that. I think even in a year, if there was something that I might be able to help with at the state level mm. for an earmark, maybe for a year, so that people can breathe and look and see if it's actually being used. Yeah. Um, but if you're coming up against contracts, that might be an issue. But again, five years ago, it might be a different, yeah. uh, what's being offered may be different. I am familiar now that he's uh, called it to mind mm -hmm. with the issue that our clerk has mentioned. And uh, again, uh, we'll be if you've requested it. We'll be happy to take another look at it. If we just get a follow up with an email, okay. and uh, you can see, see of course our uh, our clerk of the board and also uh, the council on aging, and we'll see if uh, there's uh, been a room to uh, change that policy since uh, we last looked at it. Okay, that, I really appreciate it. I do, and I'm, I'm not to say that you know it necessarily will happen, but just it's been five years, so you might want to take a look and see if there are some things that are possible and also I'm happy to talk about any kind of an earmark for a year or two to see what might might work for the town. Hey Representative Hogan, you've been so uh, responsive to all of our requests, it would be churlish for us not to take a look at uh, any requests that you have Thank of you. us. I was going to say one thing is where this did come around five years ago. I would imagine that there have been any number of, I'll call it, success stories. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are. And it might be helpful to have you know short narratives on any of the success stories. And, and then as, you might as, ask as well Crosstown to come in and mm -hmm. do a yep. presentation too, because I was always been a big supporter, and I would appreciate them yep. also letting Stone know what what's happening with everything. So you know, the other one last thing before I take any questions, I just wanted to make sure. Everybody knew the EMT program is safe. It's been secured for a year. We're anticipating that that year is going to be spent with uh, Department of Public Health and executive offices looking to ensure that that you know, stays with us, stays that the program stays as it is in place at Neshoba. Um, we were very, very aggressive in dealing with the Department of Public Health and our executive branch to let them know just how important that program is, just how good that program is. And there was a meeting that we had where we brought out the Department of Public Health to discuss with the cadets, and wow, it was amazing to see those kids there so poised, so articulate mm -hmm. about what the program does for them, what they bring to the program, just amazing. Um, and there was one a uh, person there who had been one of the first classes 30 years ago who talked about what it had done for her um, and and then talked about um, having been there on Patriot Monday when the bomb went off and how all of that had prepared her for that moment. It was quite, mm. it was quite moving and uh, mm. so th this program is in, in, we will do everything with our last breath to make sure that this stays there. This should be something that is you know, thought of as a remarkable program, not something that is ever given a hard time. So, I, I suppose, let me ask a quick question. Uh, I hadn't heard that it mm -hmm. was even in danger. Or it's, uh, well, it was just they were they were just there were questions about it. Every year, it gets sort of extended every four years, with with no promise that the next four years won't that that, that it will. And then it came to the point where. They were worried that they were going to not see an extension without some changes made to the program that the program itself didn't really want to see. So we we were we did great work, I think, with uh, with the Department of Public Health, and they were very uh, very willing to look, you know, at the program and just see how fabulous it is too. 
But this is a so one year extension as is But of that four. time is being used to look at the program itself so that they can maybe make it much more sustainable rather than extending it. Yeah, so. I would think that that would be something that should be expanded around the state versus, mm -hmm. you know, um, I'll call, you know, removed because it doesn't necessarily fit that. And it wasn't really that, it, I mean, that, that was not the, the intent, but there were some questions around it, and I just want to let everybody know that it's, it's in place. It. It's well, we're grateful for it's all this. Mm. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, State Representative. No, no, that was just... I just want to say we, we were grateful for your support of that program and all the many programs you support uh, from uh, Beacon Hill for our town and Thank you. Uh, the uh, school district. Are there any questions, uh, other questions for our State Representative? Well, we, I, oh, I'm sorry, you're bored. you got to speak up. I know, I'm sorry. So this isn't specific to Stowe, although we do get support from environmental agencies. And I was wondering if the budget has increased any percentage for environmental agencies. I don't think that the governor's budget does. I, I'm, I might be mis misspeaking, but I think that it, that may have been a level funded. Um, and we'll see tomorrow mm -hmm. the budget comes out and we will see. Yeah. And we always believe that 1% of the budget should be. Yeah, I know. It's been said for so many years. It's been years. said for many years. Yeah. And uh, we have come you know, far below making that mark. But I know that um, when the budget comes out tomorrow, we'll have a better idea of that. Right. Truly, we don't know until we see Correct. what the budget is. Because, the, like, for example, just some of DEP, when we're working in the Conservation Commission, can't do their work because state employees don't have time to review mm -hmm. and issue guidance and so it's become more and more prevalent that those agencies are stressed and there's also the interest now in delegating more responsibilities to them with the stormwater management program mm -hmm. and it's just something that our watershed association is concerned about and I know you're one person but <coughs> one of these years we need to get there we do yeah and I appreciate your work on the domestic violence. I think that's very important. Mental I health. I think we're going to do gang. We're going to do gang violence and go to uh, do an informational hearing. We'll be down in in, in Boston. Go out of the state house down mm -hmm. and do a hearing around yeah. um, gang violence as well as the public health issue. Mm -hmm. Begin yeah, to any, think of it like that. You do, and any mental health issues are public health issues. So, so thanks. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for our state representative? Oh, well, just one, one quick question. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned, uh, you know, uh, the infrastructure, highways, chapter 90, mm -hmm. money and all that. Has there been any um, uh, interest at the state house in possibly uh, adjusting fuel taxes to help pay for uh, more repairs and upgrade the infrastructure or anything? Um, and I mean, that really has not been on the... Yeah. You know, because it, out it there takes more money, it's going to come. Yeah. I know. And I think most of the fuel taxes have been the same for many, many years. And as we start... Now we talk at three, three, what, 25 a gallon as opposed to the bad old days, but there was also, when was that, a dollar fifty? or yeah, I remember when it was 50 cents a gallon. <laughs> we don't have to go there. <laughs> I know. Mm -hmm. That's not even... All right, that bidding is closed. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Any other questions or comments or praise for our state representative? We know concerns. It's concerns. We know it's a very busy time of year for the state legislature. We appreciate your making time for us to come Thank and see you. us. Thank you. It's one of our favorite parts of the year. And I, you know, any questions, concerns, follow-ups, you know where I am, and especially uh, third week in April, we will be in, at the state house. You know, right through. So, if during the budget process you're nervous, concerned, or interested in anything, just feel free to call our office. We'll likely be there. So, thank you. Thank you very much okay. for all the hard work you do for us. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Our shamed, shamed by <laughs> our clerks. <laughs> Gentlemanliness. Now this brings us to a very um, long-awaited and important part of our uh, oh, agenda. Uh, Mr. Martin, our building commissioner, is going to uh, present the uh, room rental policy for the third, and uh, I think I've already promised the last yeah, time. <laughs> we, did, we did shake on it, right? <laughs> I think we did. 
Uh, and uh, as far as I'm concerned, we're not going to go back on it. But it turns out that uh, some of these delays, while they're not, um, it, w w while they were all uh, understandable and uh, uh, worthwhile, it turns out that uh, an item came up in the last couple of weeks regarding uh, insurance requirements and special liquor liability <coughs> provisions that made the delay actually better than if we had acted upon this uh, two months ago. Uh, so I, uh, I want to uh, stay right off, uh, though, uh, Mr. Building Commissioner, we greatly appreciate your sticking with this. We know it's been tough. We know you've done a lot of work slogging through it. And we, uh, believe me, on behalf of the town, we all <coughs> appreciate it, because this is important. Well, thank you. I think we've got a, a good document here. Um, I would, like Brian, uh, our chairman said, I was here several months ago to get this started. Do you all have a copy of the, um, in your packets of the red lines and so forth? Mm -hmm. So would you like me to just go through those quickly and then um, we can talk about the insurance. These are pretty much just word smithing um, along the way. So um, we did change it to room rentals and guidelines. Uh, Mr. Hawks had made a comment about that, which I incorporated. We talked about. I, 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 Mr. Uh, unless my colleagues disagree, I'm not going to ask you to go through this thing okay. a third time. Right. We did get a copy of this last week. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, the red line is, is, is great. I have a couple of wordsmithing things to just you, as, as a you, lawyer. You can hand them to I, me. I'm just going to hand them to you. But the things yeah. that are substantive, I, I just want to uh, address. Okay, so the main item, uh, like you uh, expressed, uh, was the insurance um, requirements. So <clears throat> I did speak to both um, John Witten and uh, Barbara Carboni regarding insurance uh, and what would be required to put people into our facility for rentals and so forth. Now, they were um, not real enthusiastic about um, having alcohol being served in, in our building for um, people that are renting the facility. Is that a euphemism where they actually uh, cautioned against it, if I'm not they mistaken? They cautioned against it, yes. Um, Thank you. However, our insurance carrier, Mia, um, said, in so many words, not a problem. The, the policies are available to cover uh, alcohol in a municipal facility, and they gave us the recommendations on what those coverages should be, and they did incorporate them into the insurance section here. Um, so, in regards to the insurance, um, what I found out personally was that um, to get a million dollar bodily injury liability coverage, for example, for an event for 30 people in Pompo, for example, I called my own insurance carrier. And they said, up to a million, I can get a rider on my homeowner's policy at no additional cost. That, that's my own provider. Um, no additional cost? No additional cost. It's over. Um, under the combined single limit of three million, where the town additionally insured, um, they did say we'd have to go to what they call a commercial policy, and they quoted a price. Just this is just one price that I got uh, on my own. It was about $175 for that particular insurance coverage to cover a one-night event for about 30 people in the function. That's, that's the liquor liability. No, that's yes. not liquor. That's, that's just general. A, that's just the general liability going up to the three million uh, aggregate limit. Um, I did not get any quotes on the liquor liability, but um, I think um, we did get a policy from Maria, uh, who is uh, coming to the selectmen to ask about our test case tonight. You know, using the facility, and I'll let Maria speak to the little cost was on that. But she was able to get a insurance certificate. Um, she'll probably show it to you. This is what we got copy it. of it. So um, she was able to get that. I'm not sure whether it's through the homeowners or a commercial policy, but the other items in here that are shown, such as automobile liability, that would really kick in if you had, say we, you know, there were going to be automobile a, a car show there or yeah. something that involved automobiles where they'd be moving. That's totally unlikely. Uh, workers' comp just kicks in in certain cases. So this is the group of insurance requirements that were recommended by our insurance carrier. Barbara and John looked at it concur and so that's what I have put into the policy so so uh, just to simplify this uh, 
you're recommending a general liability of at least a million dollars, bodily injury, property damage, liability combined, single limit, with a three million dollar ag annual aggregate limit, and uh, that you said co would have cost cost you, according to your agent, uh, 175 bucks. Yeah, that's true. That's correct. Cool. And uh, automobile liability, where it's appropriate, and it would be on an as-needed basis. I don't know that I see that type of event coming along, but we have the provision in there. If we had somebody that approached us about having automobiles in the parking lot or utilizing them for some kind of right. moving around the parking lot, then we would ask for that particular policy. You, you've got the liquor liability uh, uh, Mm -hmm. uh, coverage is uh, recommended set out. Yep. Do you also recommend an umbrella liability? <coughs> that was placed in here um, by whom? By our insurance carrier. So do we need that? I think there's a little flex, in my own view, I think there's a little flexibility on the limits here. Um, probably more based on the, the type of group that's going to rent. Uh, in the facility and what they're proposing to do in the facility. Um, but this is this is the recommendation. Yeah, if you were going to bring the stones in, you might want to do that. <laughs> but do you have discretion as the designated authority <coughs> to decide which one, uh, w to decide whether you're going to ask for an umbrella liability policy you know, for an event or just so that you have the option of requiring liquor I, liability? I, I believe I do. Yeah, and I would consult with uh, insurance carrier on it, but I believe I have that ability. And what kinds of uh, events do you foresee that as being a possible additional policy? Where you might want that umbrella liability? Yeah. <clears throat> I honestly can't think of one right off the top of my head, but um, something more high risk, I guess. Um, Circus, you know, a Trump rally, like I said before. <laughs> you know, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> uh, I don't uh, think that's going to happen. No, I, I know, but I'm. But thank you for the example. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, well, I suppose uh, it's something. Uh, if it ever came <coughs> up, you could come back to the board for further guidance if you didn't think. You had the, or if the guy, if, if the board thinks that uh, if they're okay with giving me to the discretion to consult with our insurance carrier at the time, or even with our town council, then if you feel comfortable with that, I would do that, or I would come back to you, whatever you desire. I will see what the board says, Mr. Ryan. Well, one question, you know, I, I'm looking at some of these, and I, I agree with everything you've done right now because, at least at the beginning of this, I just want to make sure that we're were covered, mm -hmm. but um, is there anything that we could do, I'll call it as a town, that we would put, we, we would buy, let's say, additional function insurance, and then anybody who needed it, you know, not necessarily play middleman, but if, if the Boy Scouts needed insurance for their functions, right, <coughs> rather than having to nickel and dime, you know, 175 every time they have a, a, a yeah. you know, a dinner, that we could say, look, give us 250 bucks a year, that's going to be your share of that, and, and come, you know, this is, this is just a thought for the future. That might be possible. Let, let me just offer this. <coughs> this is a, my own example. I'm in an, an antique car club, and we hold a swap meet in, it happens to be in Maynard at the Elks Club. We take over the whole first floor. We use the parking lot. Um, we are part of a national organization, mm -hmm. like Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, any number of these group women's club. And what we do is we, our um, main club that we're a part of provides these liability policies to its members. Mm -hmm. And so uh, th like two months ahead of the event, I send a request off to our uh, national insurance provider, tell them where the event is. It's a one-day event. It's four hours. We're going to be doing X, Y, and Z, and they generate the policy and send it to me, and I, and I give it to the um, people at the Oaks and say, along with my contract, here's my policy. And, and you I, don't get it, I get it as part of the national. You don't have any additional cost for that? No additional cost. Kind of and I would, I would guess 
That's the same with um, groups like the nonprofits, the, the Boy Scouts, Cub Scouts, Girl Scouts, and that. Type of thing. It's analogous to the road races and uh, bike races that we have through the town. Uh, if they're sanctioned by a national uh, organization, coverage is provided through that national organization, and then we're named an additional third. Right. Uh, additional third, and I assume that that's uh, that's exactly what I do. That was what you would require too. Yes. yes. Sorry. Anything? Any other? Yeah, you know, I, I was just thinking of that. You know, and that that may very well cover the Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts. I'm just thinking of other rentals. You know, I don't want to get into the insurance business. However, if we could make it easier for some of the residents, because you know wh what we did is we did whittle some of the stuff down, you know, as far as the charges, but. Um, if they then have to go out and start purchasing a hundred and seventy-five dollar mm -hmm. insurance policy, when we might be able to, you know, for three or four or five thousand dollars a year, come up with a blanket for rentals. And, and this is just a thought. Mm -hmm. I, I'm good with what we've got right okay. now. Oh, if, if my colleagues will allow me, our town clerk has a thought. May I ask her to uh, give it now? I would speak as the person who booked the town hall on behalf of the selectmen for eight years. That the groups, as like the Girl Scouts, mm -hmm. for the local troop, would ask their council, the Patriots Council or whatever it was named, to get the certificate of insurance and that they would send it out. And mm -hmm. so in groups, I'm reiterating what Craig has said, and this is, this is what occurred when I was responsible. And I assume that is still occurring now that the Stockman's office is doing the town hall reservations. So I would That's assume that's the that building department. Up. No, the town hall is being done by oh, the Stockman's office. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. We so I can just, I can just, rela I'm just relating to you that what you're asking, Tom, is generally doable, especially if there's a larger statewide or national organization. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Mr. Ryan makes a good point. This, these guidelines, let me just say, uh, remind everyone, they're a work in progress, although you've done a heck of a lot of work and we're hopeful they're going to be, uh, it's good, the work is final for at least the time being. But if you find that there are situations that meet Mr. Ryan's uh, thoughts or comments or concerns, maybe you can come back to us. We're not going to, uh, I'm not going to ask you to keep changing this, mm -hmm. but in the same token, these, uh, this is not going to be put in stone. Yes, Mr. Clerk. I'm just extremely concerned about some small or ad hoc group um, that wants to come in and, and run a knitting bee or whatever uh, that might provide social benefit or, for, or working for uh, uh, charitable organizations or whatever. And if I'm reading this correctly, they, they pay a $50, or well, if they want the big room, they pay $100 refundable deposit. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying, you don't even have to rent the place, but you need a certificate of insurance, $175. You're not going to get any business. Those small groups are saying, we can't afford that. We don't have that money. You know, we, we don't collect dues. We're just a group of 18 people that got together for, for a two-week project to uh, do care packages to send to our soldiers. Now you're going to tell us you got to pay 175 bucks. Well, and that, that may get to Tom's point. Uh, because what I was thinking. One mm -hmm. time, one time. because otherwise, you're going to put all these small potential renters out of business, and I'm you know it's not my business to say that our distinguished council and Maya and everybody else don't know what they're doing. I don't like it a lot, and it, the protest vote or whatever else. But if that's the understanding of what we're going to be telling our our groups in town, I'm not going to vote for this. Just, just because of that, I, th I think it's it's overly burdensome, and I, I think this, unless there's some way around it, I'm not comfortable with this. Mr. Do you want to address that? I was just going to say that, as I mentioned, um, you can get coverage through a homeowner's policy at no cost. So if there was a group that wanted to come in as a small group and get some coverage to handle um, their small group in that building. Uh, they can't. I, I found out personally that you can do it under a homeowner's policy at no cost. And that would satisfy the, the, the insurance wonks 
No, yeah. it won't because that's yeah. only you said for the it didn't this hundred and seventy five was for the three hundred three million annual aggregate limit and then we don't know what the umbrella well, would cost. What, 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 what no, the I'm just talking about general liability for the moment. Because that's that's the one seventy five. Anybody comes Up to in the three million. Yes. The one million. The, the is one million was covered under a. In my case, when I investigated, the one million was covered under a homeowner's policy. Okay. If you're looking for the three million, which, on the smaller groups, quite frankly, um, I don't know that we would need that. Um, that that is where it cost one hundred and seventy-five dollars. That's that's. But this is quite a gray area here. You, you don't think we're going to need it. When is the first time you're going to be hit with, we're going to be hit with a call from somebody, oh my God, I wanted to come in and use the, the a facility that we paid for with our tax dollars, and I appreciate that you're not charging us rent, you're doing a security deposit, and we'll keep the place clean so we know we're going to get our money back, but we're told now we have to pay $175. And you can't give examples of when you might be able to waive that. I'll let the building commissioner address it, uh, if he can, first. Yeah, I guess the only answer is uh, I would take it on a case-by-case -case basis with consultation with our insurance provider. Once I get the input, then I would go with it. Ms. Hegeman clark So what do we do now when people rent the Stowe Hall to do yoga classes or SCT meets for their annual meeting? Do we have an insurance responsibility? Nobody yeah, my question is, are these things going to go into all the different parts of the town buildings because they, um, SCT, did, um, they did, are able to get a waiver. They got, gotten, they were able to, to provide insurance. Um, the Girl Scouts were able to. Um, you other, you're talking like about the, the town hall? Is, at the town hall. Yeah. Um, library, I don't think asks for any insurance coverage, and those rooms are available for free in the, in the library. Town Hall charges a nominal fee. Um, the B, the sewing B, or the knitting group comes in under the Council on Aging, and they are using their function in there during, under, and they're falling under the umbrella of the Council on Aging Activity groups. Some of the groups that were yoga and things in the Town Hall fell in under recreation. Um, the dance group does provide insurance. The Scottish dance has provided insurance. Um, I can't remember all of them now, because it's been a couple years. But I'm just saying, most of them were able to provide it without a problem. Granted, I don't know that the rates were at the, you know, the value was at the same. But they all provided an insurance coverage. Um, and so, and they fit under, if, you know, there are workarounds. If, they come in under recreation, or they come in under COA, or they come in under the Historical Commission, or some other way that that has been done in the past. The, uh, uh, the uh, town clerk makes a good point. I don't know if it addressed all your concerns, Ms. Hagman Clark, but the idea here is, I think, that uh, for the vast majority of people who are going to use Pompo, uh, they're going to have their own insurance or easily get it available to them. The only situations would be, and this would be up to the building commissioner and the building department, is some circumstances where a $3 million aggregate might be in order. And uh, to Mr. Clerk's, uh, Mr. Hawk's point, mm -hmm. yeah, we don't have any real guidelines on that, but uh, why don't we just see for the first year if that comes up? Then we have to change the language. It has to say. Well, we'll take, we'll take okay. amendments in a second. Um, but um, uh, so to, uh, so uh, w we can go forward, but uh, we'll take uh, amendments too. The, uh, do we want to still focus on insurance? Because I, I would like to get to some other points. Most especially, I think it's worth telling the town again how the r room rental rates uh, are a lot less than what was originally proposed, and that deserves to be mentioned again, but Ms. Hagman clark do you have a point uh, you'd like to make on insurance coverage? Would uh, you like me to make a make a motion for edits? Is that what you're suggesting? Or I can wait till the end. It well, matter. let's do it one by one. We're on insurance right now. Let's, let's take it. So 
the language in 11 says applicants are required to sign the form and provide liability insurance, see below for required insurance. So I'm thinking now based on what input we just received is that we could say something to the effect that applicants other than activities sponsored by municipal departments are required to sign da 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 and then see below for recommended insurance to be discussed with the building department on a case by case. That way it could be evaluated whether or not someone needs the mm -hmm. full whole hog. I think municipal departments is already contemplated. I it's mean, not in there. Uh, it, it's uh, free here, no charge, but it says applicants are required. Right, but we still require the applicants to sign an identification form, no matter who they were. Even uh, if they were then we the need to side. edit the and provide one liability insurance. One at a time. I'm sorry. What was that point, Madam Clerk? Oh, the municipal groups, whoever still does it, falls under the recreation, still fills out those in indemnification <coughs> forms, saying we still whatever here. I mean, they still filled it out for the town hall. This this these okay. identification. They still everybody filled it out. Okay. But then we could say, then I'll amend it to say instead of saying so applicants are required to sign an indemnification form and other than municipal activities sponsored by, or activities sponsored by municipal departments, provide liability insurance. I mean if if they're covered if they're covered under the Stoke Council of Aging or the recreation. They don't need to provide their own, is what I'm hearing. Mm -hmm. I yeah. don't know if that's accurate. And then the second piece, it's a recommended as opposed to required. Hmm. What do you think about that, Mr. Building Commissioner? Uh, I'm, I'm certainly <coughs> willing to work with you on that. Yeah. Um, the one thing I'm concerned about is I don't think, first of all, we have to make a decision uh, whether we're going to allow a uh, events to serve liquor, assuming they get a special permit. Uh, that I think is a separate decision. But uh, if we did take that step, I would feel very worried and concerned if we didn't require liquor liability insurance in those cases. So I wouldn't uh, suggest that it be recommended for liquor liability. Well, one of the things is that ultimately we actually control that be, exactly. By signing our li signing the liquor license, we can s we take actually take it out of the hands of the building commissioner at that point. We say, do you have liquor liability? Yes or no? No, we don't give you a license. Maureen, is that something we currently ask uh, liquor uh, license permit applicants? What about it? Do we, do we ask them if they have insurance? Yeah, we now do. We do. Pardon? Now we do. We had not. Oh, okay. Passed. Well, it, it it's all going to depend on where it is because if they're have if they're no, doing I, it at their house, yes, yeah, right. that's their business. Deal, but if it's in a municipal facility, then right, we're then we can require. It. Uh, well, then, um, yes. All right, we can deal with it that way outside this guideline. Although I think the guideline should indicate that uh, the board of selectmen will. Uh, almost in all cases require a liquor liability uh, coverage if a special permit is granted, but um, uh, yeah, it, it just so that they, they're not blindsided. Uh, do you have the uh, Ms. Hegeman's Clark's uh, amendments? I would like to just go over that one more time sure. so I, I get it absolutely accurate. Okay, hold on a second. Just go through that. I was going to say, um, well, one of the things that um, Mr. Martin actually did, and I think I think it might have been at my behest, was change this to say guidelines. Mm -hmm. All right. And one of the things about guidelines is is they they are a little bit more flexible than regulations. Um, that was taught to me by our fine fire chief. Regulations you shall do, guidelines you should probably do, but you know we can uh, we can work with you mm -hmm. a little bit more. I think you know you and I had a conversation about mm -hmm. that, and um, knowing that this is going this is probably going to be a work in progress. There there are any number of things that I may not like at this point, but I think it's a very very good starting point. He, you know, uh, Craig's taken our input on it, 
he's tried to make modifications and um, I'm you know w without beating it to death um, which is what I tried to do last time pardon me <laughs> um, we hire good people to watch out for our interests I think that um, we can depend on Craig to do the right thing, keep some records, and we revisit it in a year, unless there's something that you see that really kills it. Um, uh, to Mr. Ryan's point, I'm going to interject now with a point of order. Uh, because there seems to be some uh, uh, possible changes to this document other than a mere wordsmithing, I'm going to ask for a motion to accept the rental policy and then we can take amendments one by one. Uh, does anyone want care to make that motion? I'll make a motion that we accept the uh, rental policy uh, subject to any amendments that we agree upon. Uh, as presented in this draft, uh, no, this this draft to be effective 410. 410, yeah. okay. All right, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. All right, now we have a document we can work from. Let's. Um, now, uh, does anyone want to make uh, proposed amendments to this document? Do you want to restate yours? Sure. I recognize what the discussion about guidelines or not. I just think it will be helpful to applicants to understand that there may be flexibility with respect to insurance. So my recommendation at this time would be to change the first sentence to read in item. 11. 11, thank you. Applicants are required to sign an indemnification form. Hmm. Well, now I'm second guessing myself because of the liquor liability. Because I was going to say, and other than activities sponsored by municipal departments provide liability insurance. Prior to the event, may, would that, may that be a. Uh, well, let's get to it that part of it in there first. I was hopeful to get that in as a friendly amendment, but okay. Do you want to f uh, form that recommendation as a motion, Ms. Hagman Clark? Um, I will make that motion, but I want to just continue on the second sentence to say, see below for recommended insurance to be determined by the building commissioner. So recommended instead of required? Correct. And that would be my motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay. Uh, we now proceed to the amendment. Is there any discussion on the amendment? I think, you know, I, I think it's, it's fine. There may be different ways of doing it, but again, mm -hmm. I think it uh, works for me. Do you have any problems with that? No, I don't. Uh, I just want to point out, and, and this is just for discussion purposes, the these uh, limits for uh, recommended as to, to be required by both Town Council and MIAA. Mm -hmm. They weren't suggested or recommended. Uh, we asked the question of our insurance carrier and our Town Council on what the insurance requirement should be and this is what we got as a result of that. I have a question on that. So. Mr. Chair, may I ask the question? Oh, yes, of course. I'm sorry. To the point earlier that we discussed, do all our public meeting areas have this kind of insurance requirement? You may not have asked that question of either our town council or our insurance company. If our insurance company is, by virtue of you asking, changing our whole policy, that's an interesting discussion. And if we were consistent across all our municipal facilities, that's one thing. If there's more protection on this facility because it's new, then you get back to the issue, well, the taxpayers have paid to have this facility. So I don't know. I just, I, I, rec I respect what our town council and our insurance company is saying. Like you say, we have our experts. But what were they asked the question in light of all our public facilities, and is this an increase in what has happened in the past, uh, which would give our building commissioner more discretion? 
it, um, it, it's, um, it's an interesting question. Perhaps that question as to other town uh, buildings can be taken up at another time. Uh, and maybe with more input from our town administrator. Sure. But um, the question is, do we want to make these limits that have been recommended by both town council and our insurance company uh, just a, a recommendation, or do we want <coughs> them to be a requirement? Mr. Ryan. Correct me if I'm wrong, Craig these recommendations that you've got in there right now, you would probably, in order to not make them, I'll call it mandatory, mm -hmm. what we're doing is we're, we're giving you the ability to w modify them or even waive them because they're, they're guidelines and they're recommendations. However, I believe at this point you would probably need some very, very good reason to waive them or reduce them. Um, yes, and that's the and, and in the meantime, you may find some other um, modifications that we can make mm -hmm. that will live within the spirit of it, but I'm assuming that out of the chute, you're not going to say, nah, no, nope. I'm just going to skip all of these because I, I can't. I wouldn't do that. No. Right. And, yeah. That's that's kind of what I'm looking at, Ingeborg, is that I want to put something in that uh, it's for me it's been all about making sure that we're protected and we get and we're not running up additional expenses. I understand. Yeah, right. I agree with that. One thing that is bothering me though is inconsistency. I and agree. we have a liquor license to be discussed tonight. And so mm -hmm. my question is, does our current liquor license requirement require one million and three million? Or are we doing an inconsistency thing? Well, I think that the liquor license that we're gonna be seeing tonight pro does have that, Well, those limits. It's right there. Do you right. have it one and three? Or is it something else? It, it is actually, they provided uh, 500,000. Oh, they didn't know there were requirements. We're, this is not you. This is us. You know, right. you're good. Don't worry. <laughs> so right there is our, is my point. Mm -hmm. So we issue liquor licenses in town that are not consistent with this document that our town council and insurers have required. Well, as Mr. Ryan pointed out, a lot of times, in fact, almost all the times we issue a liquor license, it's not for town uh, property. Or it's under the auspices of a town function, i.e. when we've done holiday parties well, I, I know. Right. But there's awareness going on. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, I, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to, to, to get this done after I tortured I, I know. pork right the last time. I think, you know, we're stuck between recommendations provided most recently by our advisors mm -hmm. against what we've been practicing for a while. Mm -hmm. And because of this new information, we have an inconsistency in operations. I, we all want to get this implemented. And so I, I don't know what the best, I mean, yes, they're guidelines. So to your point, if we say, see below for required insurance as determined by the building commission, maybe that's the way to do it. And that way it's required and you, you, Craig, or whoever the building commissioner is, mm -hmm. could coordinate directly with town council, the board of selectmen, or our insurer. They, you know, it's the knitting group scenario or, or, you know, someone taking their kids in there to do exercise class in the middle of winter. You know, I, I that could be under rec, but, you know, so there's just mm -hmm. that weird scenario where... Do you want to wordsmith your amendment? Do I want to amend my amendment? Uh, I'm not going to go through all those procedural. I'd let you just restate it as long as we're all okay, clear. Okay, so do you want to, so is the first sentence fine? Are we good with the first sentence? I, I would just say uh, that provide proof of liability insurance before the event. That's wordsmithing. But, <laughs> that I'm no, I have no problem with that. And then the second, see below for required insurance 
as determined by the building commissioner. That's what I've written down. Okay. Yep, got that. Yep. And so now tonight, when we have our first liquor license application for this facility, mm -hmm. this person, through no fault of their own, is not in compliance with this new guideline. So we would have to issue a waiver tonight for that purpose, and you are the waiving authority. Uh, <laughs> so we'd have to. So we would have to ask, seek your counsel when we issue the liquor license tonight. Uh, I, I think that, that we can take up uh, the application for a special license. Uh, sui generis. I mean, the important thing is people know going forward what they're going to be required to provide. That's my thought. Hence, hence getting this document out there and making it live so that we can do we can do that. All right, we have a motion, uh, Mr. Ryan. Do you want to second uh, the second revised that. amendment? Yep. Any further discussion on uh, the revised amendment proposed by Ms. Hegeman Clark? Just a question: Is our is our assistant clear on what the, the wording of the language is for the minutes? The application for tonight. Are you clear on the yes. language of this amendment? I believe so. Okay. Thank you. You guys can compare notes after. Yeah, we will. Okay. If there are questions, you can always come back again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just, just kidding. Yeah, he may not want to. <laughs> <laughs> may refuse. Any further discussion on Ms. Hegeman Clark's amendment to Article or Section 11 of the Room Rental Guidelines? <laughs> Seeing none, I'll call for a vote on the amendment. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Nay. Again, let's see how it works. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, Ms. Hagman Clark made some good points. I wish we could, um, I mean, w I, I wish we could say that we're doing everything comprehensively, but sometimes we got to take little, p little uh, bites at the apple. Mm -hmm. There you go. Mr. Chairman, I'd just like to clarify, since I, hear, I think I heard Craig say at the beginning that the preference or indications from the Poobahs you referred to were that we not have liquor at this facility. That was... But your, you made a qualifying statement about that. Can you repeat that one? I think... Um, the qualifying statement was that um, obviously town council is extremely conservative when they look at something like this, but our insurance carrier said, look, th this is not unheard of. We, we issue, uh, we have requirements all the time for liquor liability. It's done many, many cases, and they, our insurance carrier did not have a problem with outlining of the insurance requirements. Okay. Having said that, Mr. Uh, clerk, uh, do you want to make uh, an amendment to Section 7? Section 7. Page 1. Yeah. <laughs> we would have to. It, it, do, you, do we want to? Well, no, you, no, you don't have to because... No. Why? Because you, you can't supersede you got to come to us for a liquor license, and that's what that says. But well, we could state no alcohol is allowed on the property. Right. You, but, and but and that would be done, what town council I think what, conservatively right, I recommended. Think we, do you want to do that? Are you looking for a motion to amend this? No, I'm looking oh. to see if anybody no. wants to amend it. No, given what I just heard from Craig, <clears throat> I would leave that, leave that alone. Is that I'm, the consensus I'm of the board? The only thing I would suggest, instead of saying permit, put liquor license. Yes. Uh, all right. I would move that <laughs> strike the word permit and insert the word license in line I, seven. I, 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 unless my colleagues feel very concerned, I'm willing to take let, it as words, I think. let the building commissioner take that. Scrivener. I've crossed it out. I've already got that. Okay. Uh, but how about substantive? Uh, Where? Anywhere. Oh, I thought you were going to add the word substantive. 
Substantive license. No, I think substantive changes to I'm the real guidelines and room rental substantive rates. Substantive guidelines. And, sorry. Are there substantive amendments that people want to Not make rather than just words? No. Uh, I think glitter should be allowed. <laughs> uh, How's that? Can we just go over? What, I'm assuming you're going to want to. I was at the end of this, if everybody says no, you're going to take a motion to adopt it. Yeah. Okay, can we just go over yep. go the table? The table, because this is the first time we have, as yep. a group, seen this. I, I think it was generation. presented earlier, but uh, I, I did want to repeat it. it. Let me go back over the table very briefly. Um, so we have table A, which okay. includes five groups, um, potential groups that could um, come for rentals at the Pacific at, uh, Community Center. So group one is town departments, organizations affiliated with the town, recreation, conservation, historic. Um, no charge for any of the activity rooms or the function room or the kitchen. No charge for them. That's municipal groups. Group two are the nonprofits, um, civil groups, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, um, the women's clubs, sports teams and other groups that are classified as 501c3 or 501c7, groups that serve the town, region, or town residents. So there is no charge for the room, but we do want to get a refundable deposit just to be on the safe side because we, we already have had a little damage from one group and we had to retain part of their, um, not a group in this group here, but. Uh, we already had to retain some of the deposit for some floor um, no, issues. But anyway, um, so I've recommended a $50 deposit for the small activity rooms, $100 deposit for the function room, $250 for the function room and the kitchen together, and then $250 for the kitchen. So those are all refundable. Um, what we would do is um, for groups that want to come back over a period of time, let's say, I'm just going to pick the Boy Scouts. So okay, they want to come in once a month for a 12-month period. We would just take that one deposit. If they wanted to use the function room, let's say, for 250 we would take the 250 We would put it in an escrow account. I've already talked to Julie about doing this. It would be a, a zero-interest escrow account. The 250 would go in there. Once their year time frame is done, we would just uh, reissue the 250 back to them. They're a very responsible group. Um, no damage, they would get the full 250 back. Or you could roll it into the next year. Or, or if they continue for another year, we just roll it in. Yeah, exactly. Any questions on that? <coughs> so oh, that applies to the examples you have listed, which I presume are not without uh, limitation. Uh, and or 501c3 or c7 specifically. That's just two categories that I, I can, came to be aware of. Um, and I did go on to say that serve the town, the region, or the town residents. And one of those groups I think that came up was the, the Rotary. Okay. I think they, I could be corrected on this, but I think they're a 501c7 as opposed to, a, I'm not sure of the exact difference, but um, they serve the town, they serve the region, there would be a group that would be. Um, can can I make one correct one possible addition then that might clarify it? You've got it five five hundred one C three or five hundred one C seven. How about and similar? That way, you know, it just clarifies it. In similar groups yes. that serve the town. Yeah. Um, yeah. Could be a Vecklin's group, you know. Some, I, I, I think that would be. I, th I think it's the intent mm -hmm. that you know, if we if we come up with another one, you know, well, you, you, don't you know what you know what my question is going to be next because I've asked it before several times. In the event that the Sunday morning group over there, mm -hmm. suppose we decide we're not going to rent it anymore mm -hmm. because we don't want to heat it in the winter, mm -hmm. and they they come to you down there. Can you accommodate them into one of these two groups? Where yes, the, where um, the definitions I think are written? I would put them, uh, looking at it, in, in group three. 
Um, okay. They are a group that serves uh, the region and the town residents. And Do we know that they're 501 c 3 That's <coughs> that's my point. I don't think I, I don't know. Group but if they three. are not, Th this says uh, a group without Thank a 501 c 3 Depending on where they land, they could land in oh. either group. That's group zero. Got it. But they're the same. Thank you. Right now. Yeah. yeah. And, and, okay. I, just Perfect. For, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt anyone. Yeah, but just for consistency's sake, uh, in Group Three, you want to say without 501c3 or 501c7. Uh, yeah, again, these are going to be uh, determinations that the building commissioner makes, and uh, I think um, we have uh, confidence in his ability to make these uh, distinctions invidious. Uh, we mean without invidiousness, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll um, uh, we'll always be here in case somebody's got questions or uh, problems, right? Yep, I'm gonna be. But come back and review as we but get, get uh, through a year. Come back and. But I think it's important, and I, I, I'm not cutting off debate. But I think it's important to make sure that the town knows, uh, even though we talked about this briefly. I think, but with a reduced complement of the selectmen, but the town knows that we were responsive to their concerns about the room rental fees originally mm -hmm. contemplated and charged, and we've eliminated those. Mm -hmm. We're only taking deposits in almost all these cases, mm -hmm. so as to protect the. Uh, property uh, that uh, we are renting. Mm -hmm. That's what's something, a point I want to make. But again, I didn't want to call any other further discussions yeah. on this table. Um, I just want to go through four and five, uh, if you'd like. Sure. Four is, um, you know, still residents that are for profit and uh, other personal events. And I felt it was um, category where we, we should uh, charge a, a modest fee uh, and a deposit for um, the use of the rooms and the, 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 the small rooms are tw uh, twenty-five dollars an hour. Um, the function room seventy-five dollars an hour. The function room with the kitchen is one hundred and fifty dollars an hour, and the kitchen alone is seventy-five dollars an hour. And that's for um, group number four. If you do the numbers out for four hours in the function room, that's three. That's three hundred dollars, which is if you look at what's charged around the area. I, that's what I pay at the Elks Club down in Maynard for my event um, for a very large meeting room. Uh, seems and I think to be it, right in, in line. And I think the last time you presented, you had a more uh, thorough cost benefit analysis uh, on the cost of uh, the, uh, on the cost of the building. Yes, and, and it was quite um, modest, a dollar an hour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just want to make yes. sure that we, because we were, uh, I'm sorry you've been back so many times, but I want to make sure that we remind people yeah. uh, how diligently you worked yeah. on our requests. Um, finally, uh, just one, one question on that yes, on that lane on the chart. Group. Uh, four. Yes. Um, res 150 for the. Q one thirty four and the kitchen. Suppose yeah. as you say, I don't want the kitchen. Then they they're seventy five dollars an hour for just the uh, function room. Doesn't oh function, function room one thirty four next door to it. Okay, okay. Yeah. All right, I got it. Yep. Thank you. Yep. You covered. Yep. I did I missed it. Yep. And then if they just want the kitchen only, yes. I have a category yep. for that. Okay. Um, but then we have uh, non stove residents or commercial events and uh, I felt Justified that they're non-residents, um, commercial events, for profit, whatever. Uh, the rates are a little higher. Fifty dollars for a room per hour. One hundred and fifty dollars an hour for the function room. Two hundred dollars for the function room in the kitchen, and then one hundred and fifty dollars an hour for the kitchen alone. All of those have a two hundred and fifty dollar uh, returnable deposit associated with them. Right. Plus, all of the categories in four and five have that asterisk hanging down at the bottom. Yes, and I put that in just simply so that we do, at the discretion of the building department, if we do get the feeling or for whatever the type of event is that we are going to need a custodian there, um, I'm not saying for an hour, maybe two hours, whatever it happens to be at our discretion, then we have the ability to say that to the applicant. Look, we're going to have a custodian available. I'd pay twenty bucks an hour for that. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I was mistaken. That, that's everything. It's not your that house. Everything <laughs> except <laughs> the pump pump center. Sorry. Group one. That asked for everyone supplies. but group one. Yes, but it doesn't mean the custodian is cleaning up. No, you're, you're still expecting 
No, I mean. Yeah, we have we do have situations, um, mm -hmm. and they're, they're fairly basic, but um, they run out of supplies during a function. A, a circuit breaker blows, mm -hmm. and they don't know where that is or where the lights uh, switches are and that type of thing, where they need some help along the way. And depending on the event, um, at our discretion, I think it's important to have a custodian on call or there. Maybe not for the whole event, but. Well, I'd say the, the, the fancier the function, the more likely it is that somebody is going to be happy to pay that to make sure that it goes smooth. Yeah. If the power doesn't go out in the middle of somebody's vows or something. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, it could be the beginning and the end. It could be for part of the event. We, we've discussed this. Uh, Way uh, too long. Is that where you're going? I'm sorry. No, I, I, was just, I was just going to say we've discussed uh, giving the building department the discretion to charge a uh, to me to assign a custodian if they thought it was necessary. Uh, I, I think that uh, was responsive to some of the board of selectmen's uh, earlier input. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yes. Any other changes that anyone would like to make to the entire um, uh, document, Mr. Ryan? The only I, I think Greg has done a great job responding to at least my comments that I sent him offline. Um, I'll leave it up to him, but I think maybe for the uh, category five, especially when you're talking about $150 or $200 an hour, that the deposit, I, if somebody's going to do that, it's probably going to be a larger function and maybe increase the security deposit to 500 It's it's The security deposit is refundable unless they mess it up. Mm -hmm. Somebody who's going to be paying a couple hundred dollars an hour to have something is probably going to have a lot of people and it's more likely to do damage. I take your point, Mr. Uh, Ryan, but we're just looking for a deposit. This doesn't foreclose the town from going after them if there's damage in excess of $250. Mm -hmm. that was, uh, that's my thought, but uh, I, I, what do you think, Mr. Commissioner? All right, th this is a category where uh, they're, they're not still residents. They're, it, who knows what type of commercial event could come in. I, I, I'm not, aver don't have an aversion to doing what Tom said, if we want to bump that up to some, whether it's 500 or 400, somewhere in that range. Um, for the large events that are going to use the function room and the kitchen together, that's going to be uh, something that uh, utilizes the facilities in a full fashion. Ms. Ryan, do you want to make an amendment to this table? I will um, make a motion that we amend Category 5 security deposits for room 134, 134 with kitchen, and kitchen only to $500. Second. Any discussion on the um, uh, motion to amend? Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Nay. That's three to one. Got it. Uh, but it passes. The only other thing is uh, that I was thinking of is the custodian is $20 an hour going to cover everything, uh, paying them, insurance benefits, everything. That's, that's a good number. Yeah. And I'm good. I, Mr. Chair. Mr. Clerk, do you have something? Yes. I, before you take a, uh, before you make a motion on the entire, I have I have a couple points. But we already did it in its entirety. No, we, we, we made we did amendments it. piecemeal. No, no, we, no, we, we did it. We did it in the entirety. Uh, and then we amended. It's it's, it's under discussion. All right. Uh, we'll come back to it in a second. But uh, I just have a couple more questions. Uh, going to uh, section two. Uh, submitted to the building department two weeks in advance of the event. Where where would we not require that? You say if possible. Where would we not want to at least give us two weeks notice? We, the only reason I say that is uh, we had one event. Um, there was a um, there was a there was a, um, a death in the family, and a group came to us um, like three days before, and they wanted to do a um, not a service in the function room, but they wanted to bring family members and uh, community members together in a fairly short notice. And we accommodated them within within a couple of days for that. That's that's the only uh, situation that's, that's come up like that. That's a good catch. Uh, I, I would just say if absolutely necessary, rather than just if possible. But I'll leave it to my colleagues. No, I think no. it's fine. 
Okay. I, I just as long as it's uh, is, is uh, I hope the building commissioner will exercise that uh, uh, ability or discretion to shorten that time uh, to um, uh, only very uh, worthy cases like you just mentioned. Uh, you've uh, passed on the glitter. Yeah, I, I, I'm going <laughs> to have to look. What we're trying to avoid uh, is uh, just trying to keep uh, you know, volleyball games out of the function room and projectiles flying around and you know, that type of thing. Silly so, strength. You know, <laughs> silly <laughs> stuff that takes time to get cleaned up and prepare for the, prepare for the next week. I, I, I just wanted to make sure that all the colleague, my colleagues had been heard. The one question I then have, and then, and, and then maybe we can take a uh, motion, is um, uh, number 12. Are we going to have a situation? Are we? Are you going to have a system in place where the code gets changed? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it won't be just set for one code, and we'll just leave it. We will change it on a regular basis. Uh, more frequently than possible, as far as I'm concerned. But I'll leave that to you. Yeah, we we, uh, we were we were uh, originally talking about every month, but um, that we will be changing the code. Does anyone else feel strongly on that one? No, I, I, I had put my given my input before that I think maybe a card reader, where a card is good for twelve hours, you know, that you, you may be able to come up with something like that. You, you've been working functions there for a year right now. You haven't had any problems. Yeah. I would, you know, so I'll, I'll, I'm leaving that to your discretion. But I think that any upgrade should be to uh, something that you can set. Yeah. So you give them a key card, they swipe it, and it's good for 8, 12, whatever our number of hours, and then, then it dies, and for them to get their deposit back, they got to get you to bring the key back, the key card. Well, I'll tell you, technology is moving along pretty quickly. We're at the point, with just talking about this key system, I just was informed about a key system that actually uh, works off of the cell phone. And so... Um, is, I think this is my badge. We will uh, <laughs> we will look into that and get um, the most um, efficient way to um, get groups in and out of that building. Yeah. Because yeah. that's be it. able to change the codes and, my, and keep track of them. The, the badge I just showed you. We have multiple badges for different people in the company, and for me to go through any door in certain areas, it's keyed to me. It knows I went through that door, <laughs> and. Um, some people just don't have access to certain areas. So, yeah. you know, the, the technology. That, that's one of the technologies actually available on the phone now. Right. Is uh, identifying who the person is. It goes through the, through the, the key code. So. But what, uh, yeah, I, I just want to say that uh, I understand the technology and I understand that you're going to keep on top of it. I'm just concerned that. Uh, not just efficiency, but security. The people get in there and then they come back another night when somebody else is there. Mm -hmm. uh, do we have security cameras there? We have eight security cameras around the exterior of the building and we are installing two inside the building. All right. Uh, as long we're, as you, we're pretty well covered. Again, as long as you get my concern, I'm willing to pass on it. Okay. Does anyone else have any amendments or questions about the uh, uh, guidelines and room rental rates? I'd like to make a motion, Mr. Chair. Uh, we've already got a motion, uh, and the motion would uh, was to, for the adoption of the room rental, unless it's a, an amendment that hasn't already been discussed. We've got a motion on the floor, which is to accept the room rental uh, guidelines and room rental policy effective uh, 41018, uh, subject to the amendments that have been <coughs> going on. So we have past. two amendments. We have so three votes I made. So we, is, I'm asking. So I'm clarifying. So we have one amend, one motion, and two amendments. Is that correct? And so we're done. If if this general motion passes. Oh, well, then he the was going to make the general motion. Does We've the, already made it though. But well, okay, fine. Is, if is you want to make it again? It, go ahead. Is it easier to do it, including as amended this date, just as part of the? Uh, we didn't make that uh, the original vote. Mm -hmm. We did have a motion to so that we could work off this document, but no, we haven't voted it yet. Of course. Okay, never mind. Fine, go for it. Make the motion. Let's move this just on. Just restate it. 
That's a great idea, Mr. Clerk. Thank you. We move to accept the revised rental policy and fee schedule for rental of community spaces at Pop Civic Community Center as proposed this date by the Building Commissioner and as amended this date. Second. Any further discussion? This is to accept the uh, room uh, rental rates and guidelines as we've uh, amended it. All right, seeing no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Congratulations. That's unanimous. Thank you very much. I kept my promise. It was hard. <laughs> it was very hard. <laughs> Thank you all very really much. Thank you. Uh, we're, off, we're off to the races. Off to the races. <laughs> of course, we may need your, your guidance and uh, authorization on the next one. On the uh, next yeah, after, so stay for... Yes, sir. I'm going to stick around. Well, with then, uh, with... Um, uh, I take it unanimous consent. I will move item seven up to our next uh, item, which is the discussion vote on special liquor license for our test case bridal shower at Pompa Community Center on April 22nd. Finally, sorry for the delay. Nope. Why don't you introduce yourself to uh, the board and I'm Maria Belkis. How do you do, Tom Ryan? Nice to meet you. Hi. Don uh, Hawks. Hi. And of course, the first order of business is congratulations. Oh, thank you. Uh, we've been neighbors <laughs> down at, at the Pablo Center. Maria lives next door. I live next door. And, and she she crossed oh, up where next door. I live in Betty Holly's. Right on. Oh, okay. okay. Right on. I was going to say, if they say Betty Holly, everybody knows where I am. Yeah. 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 Right. Exactly. Great. <laughs> right. Maria was a, a phenomenal neighbor during construction. And, uh, <laughs> we, we, we appreciate that very much. I grew up around dirt. Grew up around. All right. Uh, I take it then, uh, Mr. Martin, that the application has been uh, uh, accepted. And uh, are you sure well? The application accepted. It, it came to um, Maureen, mm -hmm. the Sultan's office, and. Um, so, uh, yes, it's been accepted. Maria's been great working with us because she was sort of the first one that we told her, yes, you can have room, yes, we'll get you a liquor license, and then the insurance stuff came down. So she's oh, very okay. flexible and understanding. And I will say that my insurance didn't cover, um, it's 150 minimum for anything. I mean, $100, $100 minimum for anything. And then it was the additional 50 to add the liquor onto that. So, so insurances will be different, I, I understand that. It, it is a problem, and it is something that people should know up front, but on the other hand, no, we want to make sure that the whole town isn't uh, uh, supporting insurance coverage for just people who are using this. Uh, no, just I, the same I, know, I know I have no problems, I understand. We appreciate, I just, but I'm saying for the town, okay. that we, we, for the town we want to make sure, just the, the same way we don't want to charge people a room rental rate if they're from the town and they're using it for town purposes. But th uh, again, uh, I add my um, thanks to Ms. Eggman Clarks, which is we appreciate your understanding. We know it must have been tough last couple of weeks, but there was just this last minute wrinkle. You guys are easy. Try the girls. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure with a Bride Bridezilla right now is becoming very interesting. <laughs> you're on TV, by the way. Remember you're on TV. <laughs> Live TV. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, all these things. <laughs> well, I, 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 I will look behind you. <laughs> we have the application for a special liquor license with limits, uh, and uh, the coverage is 500000 for a million. I don't think this board has it in the heart to ask you to double that. Uh, well, so you're going to have to, but we, we always make sure that there's one person responsible for overseeing the distribution and the pouring of the liquor, which in this case is mimosas. But it's mimosas. There'll be about 30 people there. And who's that one person going to be? It's me. Okay. I can't hear. I, I am the mother I, I, of I, I, all these bridesmaids. I just wanted it on the record. Uh, it's on the record. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions or comments for our applicant? Are you going to have any glitter or silly? <laughs> <laughs> no glitter. No projectiles. <laughs> no projectiles. That's no the, silly string. The glitter is for the bachelor We will party. have pineapples. Pineapples will be there. We can love those. Or, uh, I, I I actually think this is this is a good test case for this because it, it does kind of show the different types of functions that uh, could happen and where some of the modifications could be made. That I, I think uh, 42 people with some mimosas is a lot different than 
the Hell's Angels coming in. When do you plan on sponsoring them, Mr. Ryan? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, we appreciate your being our test case and working You're through the system. Welcome. And it's, I'm sure it's helped out uh, our, our building commission to have an actual live applicant that they could work uh, some of this through. Uh, then you, want, you want a motion? Then? Yes, if there are no questions or comments, I will take a motion, Mr. Ryan. All right. I move to approve and sign a special one-day liquor license for a bridal shower sponsored by Maria... Uh, Belkis. Melkis. Belkis. Belkis. It's a B. Oh, okay. Um, to be <laughs> to Don't be worry, it's just... Sorry. Me. To be held at the Pompo Community Center on Sunday, April 22nd, 2018, between 1 and 3 p.m. It's 3.30. Uh, 1 and 3.30 p.m. I think the spot, uh, I think you can stop there, Mr. Yeah. Ryan. And seeing as there's no silly string or <laughs> glitter, I'm good. Do I have a second? Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any further questions or comments? Seeing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. That is true. Deeply appreciate Thanks it. for waiting so yes. Thank you. Oh. Thank you for waiting. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for working and with us. And that was the building commissioner's first waiver. <laughs> yes. Uh, right out of the box. Right out of the box. <laughs> well, it's, it's a special case. I, I suppose we didn't even ask you if you thought it was okay. <laughs> it's too late. <laughs> yeah, it's too late. <laughs> well, we're the uh, liquor license granting uh, authority. Uh, but you've got the coverage. Expression. Well, yeah, we or, or. we also have it, and we have to sign the form. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, thanks there very much. Is. Thank you very much. And uh, if you have any questions or problems, you can always come back and see us. <laughs> I, I love coming here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God you're not under oath. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Good luck. All right. Now, uh, I'm going to return to the regular order of business. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <You're welcome. laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Turn to the regular order of business, and that would be the permit for the Stowe Garden Club's annual plant sale mm -hmm. on uh, Saturday, May 5th. Uh, location to be determined. I thought we did have a location. It's changed a few times um, due to the fact they want to put up a tent and there were wires underground in certain places. So it's come to a discussion between highway facilities, and we sort of stayed out of it till the end, but uh, it's going to be held on common in front of the UU church near the library but not in front of the library and they've coordinated with the church the parking will be available the okay so right up first parish church first parish church right yes yeah. and that's due to the there. Yeah. construction, construction <laughs> on the lower common and that's due to construction on the Yes. Is it the Lower Village yeah. Common? Yeah. yeah. That's where they've traditionally held it. Yes, yeah. Okay. The Lower Village Common. So it's going to be on the regular common in front of First Parish Church. So Correct. center common. I just want to make sure everyone else understands it. Because mm -hmm. if I'm having trouble, maybe somebody else is. Uh, but maybe not. Mr. Chairman, you ready for a motion? Yes. I move to approve the use of the Stowe Center Common by the Stowe Garden Club for its annual plant sale. On Friday, May 4, from 8 a.m. through 6 p.m., Saturday, May 5, from 8 a.m. until 3 p.m., as described in the request from the Garden Club co chair, Marie Patrice Masse. Second. Which we have in front of us. Uh, I want to um, thank the um, Still Garden Club and everyone who's uh, going to be disrupted uh, by the uh, Lower Village construction for uh, working with us and making accommodations. And this is an especially worthwhile event every year. I always buy a couple of plants uh, so that um, uh, my, my, my family can water them. Uh, <laughs> any um, questions or comments on the motion? All seeing none, all those in favor? <coughs> aye. 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 Opposed? That's unanimous. And um, again, thank you to the Stowe Garden Club for doing this every year, and especially for their understanding this year. Now, uh, that brings us to, uh, I'm going to take nine in front of eight, if that's all right, because our town clerk has been here and she wants to address this. Uh, Maureen, uh, did uh, that email from our town clerk get disseminated to everybody in the Board of Selectmen? I don't think so. Ah. With numbers and everything? Uh, I'm not yeah. sure if that was confidential. Well, it's not. okay. Uh, 
It's not, yeah, no, it's, uh, but uh, maybe in the, um, uh, in the interest of uh, speed, and I know you've been here uh, quite right. a while, uh, and also I have to bring up uh, to date some of the members who weren't here when we first discussed this. About a month and a half back, uh, there was um, uh, a, a, an issue raised by Mr. Ryan quite proactively and perspicaciously to um, address some of the um, uh, questions that could be submitted to the town in the proper procedure, in the proper proceeding. That is, whether we would ban recreational uh, uh, marijuana facility. No. <laughs> It's not, not totally. I don't, well, go ahead. Go ahead. Ban recreate. We we the town has the authority to ban recreational facilities if it wants. Has the ban the uh, ability to uh, ban industrial or growing marijuana facilities. Has the ability to ban recreational facilities which have a marijuana lounge on site. We can also charge a three percent tax. Uh, tax. I'm not going to go into all the permutations right now. Mr. Ryan is working on it very diligently with the new, with the new working group. And again, <laughs> uh, just for anyone who wasn't here, we're very grateful for that. But some of these items, if we are going to present them to the town, and that hasn't been decided yet, would have to be presented to the town in a special election. We're planning a fall town meeting where uh, these bylaws, uh, certainly some bylaws have to be adopted, but some of these questions will be raised and addressed. Uh, I think I've mentioned previously um, that we're going to ex uh, vote at this town meeting to extend the moratorium to give us sufficient time to address all these issues if we want to do so. But uh, at that meeting, our uh, thought was we, uh, we could either do it at this annual time, these, all these different questions and com uh, uh, and issues could be presented at this annual town meeting or they could be presented in the fall. And uh, it was always understood that there had to be a special vote at the ballot for some of these questions if we are going to present them. Our town clerk uh, did some research. Originally we thought that we could get a better turnout, we could get, uh, uh, it might even be easier to have uh, the vote by the town at the November general election when there's so many uh, more people and would have so much more input. That was the thought. But uh, our town clerk has determined uh, through discussions with the election commission that we need a separate town ballot, which would almost be like a separate election at the November 6th, is it, general election. And that's going to require some additional costs. I'm not going to ask the town clerk to itemize those costs. It was in an email to the town administrator. Uh, but uh, it, right now, you think it's going to be about roughly $6,000 mm -hmm. to run a special part of that general, town, uh, general election just for these ballot questions. Correct. Again, only assuming we decide to do it. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. Have I stated the uh, situation? Pretty succinctly. Uh, fairly? Yeah. Same with you, because the confusion came since our last meeting, because at that time, I believe I heard you opine that perhaps we could put it on, the, on the state ballot. Correct. And you have been informed since that we cannot do that. Correct. Necessitating. A completely separate ballot with completely separate check-ins, completely separate counting um, things. So. We have run dual elections. Tom was originally elected to the Board of Selectmen on a dual one. We voted at the Pompo um, Library mm -hmm. Fire Station. We had questions at a state election. Um, turnout is definitely higher. Um, this is a midterm election. We predict anywhere from 75 to 80% 80 turnout. We had 85% turnout at a presidential. This year we're only, elect, only electing governor. Um, a new congresswoman, uh, congressman in the um, for Nikki Songus's district. Um, we have a uh, representative and senator in the general court. Um, governor's council. Governor's council, yes. Then I think there's an AG in there, and there's a couple other there's a couple other things in there. But it's smaller than it'll, it's usually typically a smaller turnout. But I still, I mean, it's a high turnout. 
Um, even if we don't have it on that November date, um, and we had a, a special, the numbers would still be higher. For, so we are required to have one ballot for every person who votes. And so on a state election like this, I'd be ordering the full contingent. On a town election, I reduce it a little because, you know, we usually get maybe 15% turnout or 20% turnout. So I don't have to go as many ballots. I don't have to put as many workers on. The other thing that goes on with state election on November 6th, we do 10 days of early voting. Because, and I was informed by the Elections Division at the Secretary of the Commonwealth's Office, that because it's going to be held on the, if we hold on a town election on that same day as the general election, early voting is offered for the uh, locals. Typically, early voting is not allowed. Um, and so that means 10 days of voting for that. So it's, it's more work on the input, putting the data in, working off our data lists, checking everything in. So that's, I basically took the numbers from last year's, or the 2016 election, looked at the numbers, figured out how many people would need to do this, um, and I've come up with this um, estimate of around $6,000. And the estimate, I think, is valid. I think the town administrator thinks it's valid. The only thing that we have to do tonight is decide whether or not to authorize this uh, expenditure because we've already voted the budget, but I've been advised by the town administrator we don't need to take any special motions or special precautions. We would just be adding $6,000 to the town clerk's budget if it was needed to have a special right. Right. town ballot. Only be, to be expended if Only town meeting or Correct. Correct. Yeah. Well, the other thing, too, is like because it's in advance and we're already talking about either having a special in October or because we were in a town that uh, we, by 53%, we adopted the uh, ballot question of 2016. So that's why it requires the additional ballot vote to do any restriction right. or prohibiting. So. If that's what we go, either in a special town election, I'm still going to use part of this in a special town election because my budget doesn't includes for a special town meeting doesn't include a special election. That's the what. So in my budget, my annual budget, always includes annual town meeting, annual election, special town meeting. We have dropped in past years putting in a special election because we typically didn't need one except for a ballot question. Um, and a debt exclusion, uh, prop two and a half override. Um, so that was not in there. Now knowing after the budgets were going in that this was going to come in, I wanted to get it in so that we're not using a reserve fund transfer. Because you just confused me. I thought I understood <laughs> it right up until the end. I, did you just say my annual budget? Wait a minute. Let me see if I can you state want me to, it. You want to state it? Okay that you will use part of this money even if there is no special election? Did you say that or did I mishear it? I will use it if there is a special election in October or in November because a special election is not in my annual budget. Okay. So I will, if you call a special election, I will probably use, and it's not on November 6th, I will probably use less. But I will use at least that much if it's called in November. So uh, again, I didn't want to get into all the permutations and combinations. I think uh, we're uh, sufficiently familiar with our town clerk's expertise to say to say that if she thinks she's going to need up to six thousand dollars and it should be in the budget, then uh, we can, uh, we can act confidently on that. Yeah. We can would it, put it in the warrant, or we could change it on town meeting floor. Well, or I can get <laughs> full okay. support of the well, enough enough permutations, enough different <laughs> things. Possibilities. And, and I'm sure if she finds some way around it, she just won't spend it. I don't spend it. I turn yeah. money back. There's many oh. times when I will turn it back. But. Would, you, would you care for a motion, Mr. Mm -hmm. Chairman? Uh, yes, that would be very helpful. I at move with the selectmen approve the addition of six thousand dollars. Uh, in the FY 2019 budget to cover the cost of a possible November local election for ballot question on marijuana regulations or any other requirements. Or any other special election? Yeah. Any other questions without getting into the weeds? Second. Mm -hmm. 
All right, I've got a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed, thank you for staying. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry the selectman can't help me at elections, but I'll get you to work with me at other times. Uh, little man right there. I know, I get ready to help you. And he has his sister. All right, we've been moving quite around, uh, around quite a bit, but uh, I think we are now at the uh, discussion to vote to accept the 2018 annual town meeting warrant. Uh, has everyone had a chance to review it? I understand that uh, FinCom has made recommendations. I don't know if anyone's had a chance to look through all those recommendations, but uh, they're here in red. Uh, this afternoon, I they're not in red. I got them this morning, so... Um, Are they in the thing yeah, you... The no, they're in the, they're in the draft that uh, our administrative assistant just gave it to us. Just gave it to us? Yeah, this is because the income recommendations didn't come until this afternoon. I don't. Do you don't want to go through? Them? I don't have. It. We don't. Yeah, no. The, you wouldn't have it because this is. But oh. we don't really need to vote on the details. Well, the on the FinCom. Fine. That's fine then. Yeah, I I scanned through it. I don't. I didn't see any fatal flaws, and I assume that Maureen and Phoebe are going to be cleaning up a few of the things anyway. So I think, mm -hmm. you know, from. Uh, Form, fit, and function. It's pretty, pretty well put together as usual. Good yeah. job. And and obviously, yeah. Anything in red in here is the finance committee's recommendation. We don't mm -hmm. have any business changing mm -hmm. anything. So That's fine. We can we, try. We will read it <laughs> line by line before town meeting. Having to be prepared. Having said all that, is everyone uh, finished with their thoughts on the town meeting warrant? I move to accept the warrant. Before you. Before, oh, why don't you make your motion? I apologize for interrupting, I Ms. Clark. move to accept the warrant for the May 7, 2018 annual town meeting dated April 10, 2018. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Before we take a vote, though, I wanted to ask the uh, FinCom uh, committee member, uh, Mr. Peter McManus, if you have anything that you'd like to tell us about this warrant uh, on behalf of FinCom or on behalf of yourself. You've been here all night. I know. <laughs> or almost all night. Any? Um, no, I just, I think it's a good document. I think it's a great budget, and I think everyone works very hard on it. And uh, I just want to be here, uh, you know, for that. We don't have anything to add. I don't I believe we supported, uh, you know, everything that's in there. Um, so I don't have anything really to add on that, other than to just congratulate uh, everyone's cooperation and uh, effectively so. Thanks. You're going to have to revote the nine grand we just gave Linda. Six. 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 I'm sorry. That's how rumors get started. I know. <laughs> Someone's a little <laughs> dyslexic. Right, okay, okay, okay. Let's not relying on the reserve funds. Let's use our time wisely. Anything else, Mr. McManus? Uh, no. Thank you, then, and, uh, thank, you. Uh, thank you and your committee for your input. And uh, I, yes, uh, it's been stated that uh, what we approve tonight is uh, not the recommendations, it's just the uh, actual wording of the document, which is subject to some non-substantive changes mm -hmm. as it gets ready for printing. Right. With that in mind, any further questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor of uh, the Aye. draft, uh, I guess it's a 4218 version, is it? Dated April 10. April 10, 2018. Aye. 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 All those in favor? I'm sorry if I didn't make that. No, that was the motion. Dated okay. uh, one dated April 10, which in, so that includes the documents that okay. Mr. Okay. And we have, have copies of those in the email or something? The April 10th version? I'm up, to, I don't know what version, but it's all basically the same. Um, no, I, I'm assuming that, I'm just asking, was it emailed to all of us? The April 10th version, was that emailed to all of us? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's all I wanted to know. Because I printed this out today, and it's okay. not that date, so I don't know what I did. So, All right, thank you. Uh, subject to that clarification, uh, any further questions or comments? All right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? That's unanimous. Uh, thank you all, and uh, thanks uh, not only for the work I uh, Administrative assistance has done in the past, but she's going to do it in the last in the next couple of weeks before this goes out to print. Uh, it's, a, it's a good document, uh, workable, and uh, it will get us through a uh, town meeting. Mm -hmm. Town council has also seen that version and approved. Uh, thank you for bringing mm -hmm. that to our attention. All right, uh, our next item is the town administrator's report. 
I absolved the town administrator from appearing tonight, but I didn't absolve him from giving his town administrator's report, but uh, it would be quibbling to, and cavilling to, to mention that. Here's an item, and it, I hope it won't take much time, but I asked it to be put on the agenda. It's a discussion of the Tritown meetings, and I'm, I'm going to rely heavily on our clerk and our liaison at Tritown. And let me start off by saying no one is more, um, I don't know, facetious about uh, Tritown than I am. Uh, on the other hand, if we have a Tritown committee or a Tritown meeting of the three towns and now the school committee, and we're supposed to meet, we're supposed to get value out of it. We haven't met, or that Tritown hasn't met. In, uh, it's November, I think. Yes, yeah, in over half a year. Either we continue to support Tritown, or, uh, and we try to get it on track, or we, we just uh, Chairman, give I have it up. A, I have a little bit of information, because I, I was somewhat flummoxed <laughs> by the uh, notice some 24 hours before the much delayed uh, meeting was to be held that it was canceled with no explanation i have an explanation that's the most recent one i can also shed some light on why it took so long number one we met in november and everybody said well december's not a good time to meet so that was gone at that point um stan star uh, uh member of the board of selectmen from uh lancaster uh, said that that's, that that's good because we will now be able to host the meeting in our new revised glorious space and we can show it off. And then, of course, construction schedules being what they are, that pushed January slip to February. Now, there's a gap in here because now we're in April. Uh, but the most recent one, um, and, and, and again, for the, for the uninitiated, the calling of a Tritown session is rotated among, used to be three, and now it's four entities. The town of Lancaster, the town of Bolton, the town of Stowe, and the regional school committee by, by concurrence at a recent meeting, or, the, or stated without objection. Uh, we, the, the, the last three have met it. Uh, Lancaster's turn to do so is this time. So we were looking forward with great anticipation last week to meeting, following all these delays, and then I found out today why it was canceled. And it, we can, in fact, uh, one of the Bolton selectmen, whom I won't name, I spoke to this afternoon, and he says, blame it on us, blame it on Bolton, because they went ahead and scheduled the date uh, for the was subsequently canceled, not knowing that that was the night of our candidates' night here in Bolton, for we have two, two comp uh, competitive elections: school committee and uh, selectmen. So uh, I talked uh, that member of the selectmen talked through his town administrator, and and requested that give them the courtesy since no one would be there from Bolton. I mean uh, that night. Uh, what this gentleman suggested to me was that, that he thinks the date that has been floated, and if anybody knows any more about this, chime in, was April 25th. Have you heard anything today? No. No? No, yeah, but that's the um, public hearing on the moratorium. Okay, the so that moratorium. either, see, so now. Well, that's the, I, I mean, okay. I don't think that's gonna be, it, it's just a question about extending the moratorium. We have to have a public hearing if it's gonna go on the yeah. town ballot, yes. or in the town meeting. But the point, that, ballot. but, we're off the subject. The point is that's why there has been this series of unfortunate delays. No, I know, and I, I, I'm, not, I'm not asking you to uh, account for the Tarrytown, of course, Mr. Clerk. And I only mentioned that because you were talking about April 25th. I don't think it's an insuperable bar to holding Tarrytown, just that moratorium. But you know, there's some interesting things going on in this uh, pre-member uh, uh, town district. I mean, Lancaster is going to be doing a proposition. Uh, I think they're going to be required to do a proposition two and a half mm -hmm. this year. Uh, I'd like to know more about all this stuff going on. And again, nobody is more snarky than me. I appreciate that. And uh, to the extent I have to eat my words, I do. But if we're going to have Tritown, we should have Tritown. If we're not going to have Tritown, we shouldn't. And the most important thing is, and I, kept, I keep trying to put this on the agenda, is that you need to have it on a different night. And we, we originally scheduled Tritown for Wednesdays. Because school committee met on, uh, what was it, Thursdays, Tuesdays, I forget. 
But now they're meeting on Wednesdays. We, again, I don't want to belabor this, but I do think we need a sense of the board that uh, we got to get Tritown uh, working again or just abandon it. Any thoughts or comments? Mm -hmm. My, one of my thoughts is, is you know, I used to attend Tritown quite a bit many years ago when I was on the finance committee. Um, I've gone a number of times since I've been a selectman, but um, I think it's a very good thing to have in place. And if any one town had what they felt was pressing business that we needed to all discuss together, I think we would have found a way to have a meeting. Um, you know, when things are going reasonably well, sometimes uh, you can let, kind of let the stuff slide, and sometimes, you know, other things get, get in the way. I wouldn't say that we've got to insist that we have them every month, because, you know, but at the same time, I, I see your frustration on, you know, it, it having been six months or five, four, four or five months. but. The thing is, to Don's point, you know, sometimes stuff happens. But and, and, part, and part of the stuff happening this year, as your representative to the Neshoba School Committee, uh, you can attest that they had, they had done this budget season, just concluded, a lot more meetings mm -hmm. than, than previous school committees, with the results of which we have not been so pleased. So uh, it was. It certainly was. Didn't make sense to insist. No, the school committee shouldn't meet that night and push off your budget <coughs> deliberations to come to Tri Town. So it's all part of a, a right. same uh, right. cloth, I think. But uh, particularly uh, with the current school committee and administration, there is much more dialogue. Uh, particularly with the uh, superintendent and the th three respective town administrators. In a way, I'm not saying that takes away the necessity of Tri-Town, but it's, it softens it more. I think that Bill Wrigley will tell you frankly uh, that he has had much more contact with and knows more about what's been going on this year budget cycle than he ever has in his 25 years here. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I think part of the curse of not meeting this way, it's not our only avenue of conversation where in the past uh, previous administrations it was. Right. Uh, I, none of that takes away from the fact that I think we ought to continue to do what we can and, and have, a, have a discussion item at the next one about what can we do to make this uh, happen more on a regular basis. I concur with the Chairman's need to do that. Well, perhaps I just needed to get some stuff off my chest. Uh, and I appreciate my colleagues for listening to me. Segment Clark, you're the only one who didn't have any thoughts on this. Do yeah, you? it sounds to me like I think we should continue to support it, and I recognize the difficulty, and I think Tom's comment is actually pretty good when things are going well and things will slip, and the fact that there's other ways of communication. So, yeah, I can understand the, the frustration, but I also, also think continued communications is very valuable. It in is. whatever form. Mm -hmm. it, it is, and I'm not saying that uh, we, we have any kind of um, disruption in the uh, town gown relationship. Uh, it's, as everyone's pointed out, it's, it's doing well. On the other hand, the idea of Tri Town is not just for uh, school matters, there's some other matters, right. Right. just to get a sense of where everyone is. Uh, I would urge, and, and, and this of course is no reflection upon our liaison to Tritown, not at all, but uh, I just would urge that we uh, we can put it together on April 25th, I'll try to go. Um, it's just, uh, it, it, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing regularly. I don't know if it can ever be <laughs> worth doing well, if it can ever be done well, but it's worth doing regularly. Well, you know, Don, it's been a while since I have attended one, but Correct me if I'm wrong, but if the if any member of any one of the three towns or the school district felt that there was an immediate need to get everybody together, it would happen. Correct. I'm sure there would have been some Tom, be way, Tom be Tom's, to, you know, right. beating that that didn't. Right. Right. Uh, but uh, and, and that's it. Things are going good, and back 
when I used to go a lot, it was basically to try to get consensus amongst the three towns to um, uh, modify the behavior of the school district, which doesn't appear to be as needed. So, you well, know, it's, it's, it's very different spirit. It's very different spirit right now, so that's good. I, I think everyone's had their say on this, and uh, I, again, uh, appreciate my colleagues for listening to me on this one issue and try to move forward. Um, uh, now we get to liaison reports. Uh, Ms. Hegeman Clark. None to report. Meeting this week with SMOT, but that's all. Uh, Mr. Hawks. I have nothing. Uh, nothing from me at the moment. Uh, Let's go home. We have. Uh, if you do it quick, we can just one minute. <laughs> no, you're not going to put me in that bind again. <laughs> all right. <laughs> oh, come on. Uh, <coughs> we have a new LACAC executive director, Maureen. All right, uh, I, uh, blanking on the Jonathan name. Jonathan. Yeah, Jonathan. Okay. Yeah, John, wasn't Jonathan sure. Daisy. Jonathan Daisy. Sorry, mm -hmm. Whew, I don't know why I blanked on that. Um, uh, he's very capable. He's been working with LACAC for years. He'll be a wonderful successor to um, uh, to uh, Ann Bentine. Yeah, that one I remember. Uh, she was just, um, in fact, uh, they uh, took the vote on Jonathan at the, uh, uh, two weeks ago at our last meeting, uh, which I couldn't attend. Uh, let's see, uh, I've been meeting regularly with FinCom, trying to address uh, uh, and trying to liaison uh, with some of their concerns. I think uh, in, in the end they had a lot of questions, but they were very satisfied with the way the budget uh, uh, turned out. and. Um, we're going to have ongoing discussions with FinCom uh, like we uh, did at the uh, public, uh, on some of the subjects we mentioned at the, the public hearing that the town administrator had on a going forward basis so that they're not all crowded together in the, t in the budget uh, making process. Uh, let's see, uh, COA hasn't met for two months, uh, but it'll be meeting on uh, Thursday. The last thing and the most important thing is and this kind of coincides with correspondence. I didn't want to get into that because we had a special guest and I didn't want to delay our state representative. But you will recall, I'm sure you've seen the correspondence from the Gleasondale group. Yes. Uh, responding to our um, uh, uh, filing uh, in the Eversource uh, uh, petition to the Energy Facility Siting Board. And uh, some of you weren't here, but we had to have that uh, discussion later on in the week. And as a result, some of our suggestions didn't make it into the original March 15th filing. Uh, but our town council was, uh, was understanding. She got permission from the EFSB to file an amended brief of the intervener town of Stowe, uh, which, um, uh, I believe has been circulated. Uh, it, quite frankly, it doesn't address the, uh, all of the concerns of the Gleasondale group. It is not as strong as that group would have liked. Um, and um, rather than uh, revisit all these issues again, uh, I see some of their points. On the other hand, we did file this amended brief. I would suggest to my colleagues that uh, we email them a copy of the amended brief mm -hmm. so they can see that we did take some action uh, even though it's, it's not as strong and there isn't as much in there about vegetation control that I would have uh, that some of us would have liked but uh, we did address some of those concerns and we did make it very clear that we were uh, uh, we were not in any way in any way supporting or uh, in fact we were uh, very opposed to uh, an above ground route along the MBTA right of way. Uh, it's not, um, as I said, it's not what our Gleasondale uh, neighbors might have liked. Uh, it's certainly not what our, our uh, neighboring towns would have liked, but uh, we did take this and I suggest we send it out to uh, the Gleasondale group. That I, is everyone in agreement with that? I, I abstain. Oh, I am so sorry. Yeah, because uh, I should have remembered that. It's, Do a, you want it's a public document that's yeah. been filed. So yes, but yeah. she. Yeah, I, I just want to make here. sure she's my colleagues behind me on that. Yes, and please make a note that uh, uh, Ms. Hegeman Clark did not participate in it. And it was 
Actually, I apologize, but it was a mistake. Before we move to adjourn, this piece of paper was in my was in mine too. pile. And neither of us have anything to do with that. We no, weren't that here right, right. the night that that Toll Brothers Did we have acceptance. To, we that was in the packet by accident, but we actually signed the correct thing tonight. We, we, we did? We, we did sign the Toll Brothers. Not we did. You did we. at the last meeting. All right, all right, if it's not needed, if it's extraneous, ignore it. Yeah, I did see that, quite frankly, I did see this in the packet. I thought it was a mistake, but yeah. we should have I should have clarified I that. that. Thank today. you for bringing that to our attention, Mr. Clerk. Anything else before I take a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Uh, all those in favor, that's unanimous consent. Okay. See, how's that? Mm -hmm. Very oh, good. Thank you. Pretty good. <laughs>